hi everybody. We're meeting Mr. Ryan Bacher today from NetFlorist. He's going to be sharing his insights on how was NetFlorist started and how did he manage to stay afloat throughout 2020. Thank you so much for having to sit down with us and discussing NetFlorist and how you guys managed to stay afloat throughout COVID season or rather lockdown. So without further ado, for somebody that's living under a rock, Ryan, and they don't know about NetFlorist, would you kindly share a story area regarding that? <laughs> yeah, cool. Sure. Um, so we're, we're just over 20 years old now, which makes wow. us one of the old guys in the e-commerce industry, which isn't great. You know, it's not good to be old in this industry, <laughs> but we are. What can I say? You would. No, yeah. Then I'd say you've got more than enough track record to go by there, hey? Hopefully. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. guess. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, okay. And we, we started early on because um, uh, one of the large retailers, Macro, approached a business that I was working for mm -hmm. in 1999, actually, so it's a while ago. And they, they wanted to go online with e-commerce. All right. And e-commerce was new in South Africa. Nobody uh -huh. knew about it. Yep. And, uh, and they wanted us to build their website and build their e-commerce uh, scenario. And we thought the best way to do that would be to build something ourselves, learn about it, and then Alrighty. build theirs and other people's. We thought that that's an interesting opportunity, actually. And Jeez. yeah, and so we picked flowers very randomly. We, uh -huh. There was a business overseas that had just started, and we thought, we'll sell some flowers. We don't know how it works, whatever. We'll build a little website. We'll put some pictures of flowers. We'll that's sell it. one or two somehow, get it delivered, and then we'll go to Macro and say, we know what we're doing and we'll build your site. So that, that's, that's how NetFlora started. There wasn't any um, idea at that stage that we would actually have a online retail business. It would more that we'd be servicing others. That's how it wow. started. That's awesome. Yeah. That's very, very wonderful. So Ryan, when you guys started in 99, and um, well, yeah. this is a, something that we've picked up from you guys' website, that you yeah. knew nothing about flowers. Would you run us through that? Yeah, so I mean, I went to law school, and my two mm -hmm. partners who are in the business with me—the one's an accountant, the other one's an engineer. We Jeez. knew absolutely nothing about flowers. I mean, I'm not sure I still know that much about flowers. Uh -huh. I mean, I know uh -huh. more than the average person, but I, you, you've been there for uh, like 20 years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't say I'm an expert. It's not, um, you know. Thank God we've got people in our business that are experts in flowers, but we knew That's nothing funny. about it. We we just we picked flowers because. We could have picked anything just to prove a yeah. test scenario. Say we could go to Macro and say we know what we're doing. We will build your site. Could have been anything. Wow. Yeah. Gee whiz! And would they have been maybe happy with anything too? Yeah, they would have been because they they, they just wanted to know that we could uh -huh. build an e-commerce site, take a transaction, get the thing delivered. That it didn't matter what. We landed wow. up never building anything for Macro because quite early on we kind mm -hmm. of thought hold on, maybe there is an opportunity here in yep. this floral thing. So we kind of, a year or two later, we started to focus on it. And that's wow. been my primary focus since then. But uh, but originally, there was never any idea to actually have an online florist and gifting business. It was really just to get a foot in the door at Macro. That's all. That's no. amazing. That's amazing. And look at you 20 years after that. Hey. <laughs> look, it's a strange story, but actually lots of businesses start and then they, there's like this unintended consequence of other things. So you know, lots of businesses have strange start stories. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cheers. Okay. Now, now I know. And um, another question: Where do you guys get your flowers from? All over South Africa. So we we buy directly from a lot of farms. We buy from the flower market wow. in Joburg. There's a big flower market, and we also buy from uh, Kenya, from Ethiopia. Wow. So we're sourcing from a lot of places. Yeah, we're we need different varieties. We need Absolutely. different flowers bloom better at different times of the year Absolutely. in different parts of the world. So we have quite a big supply chain. Wow, that's awesome news. Okay, now great stuff. So a quick question: NetJewel is a product that you guys have in NetFlorist. Would you like to tell yeah. us more about it? Yeah, it, it 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 was an idea we had quite a while ago. Is that mm -hmm. so? Right now. 60% of our business is flowers, but 40% is non-floral. Yep. And the reason for that is quite early on in our journey, I'd say about five or six years into our journey, we realized that we're not really a florist. We, we, mm -hmm. When people send flowers, it's really as a gift. That's why yep. people send flowers. It's, it's not really about the flowers. It's about the message on the card and the emotion Very that that transmits. 
And flowers are a good product to send as a gift sometimes, but not always. True. Yeah, absolutely. Um, after, yeah, after a few years in the business, we started to realize that we're not a florist. We're actually mm-hmm. a gifting business, uh, but yep. we focus on flowers. Mm-hmm. And so at that stage, we started to think we should be broadening out. And we started adding gourmet hampers and um, bath and body stuff uh-huh. and gowns and those kind of things. Yep. And then we added um, uh, jewelry, uh, jewelry and perfume because... A lot of people buy jewelry as gifts and perfume as gifts. So that's Very been true. added on. And we added a bakery and we've got a whole personalization department. So as we've gone, uh-huh. we've broadened our range of gifting because flowers isn't always the right gift for an Very occasion. True. Very true. Gee whiz. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm actually blown out of the water with that story. Gee whiz. Okay, cool. And how did you come up with the character, um, Harold? Hi, it's Harold here, your fabulous gifting guru. Have I got a recipe for you to spice things up for your next anniversary? Start off with a bit of the Naked Chef. You can give it the book too if you want. What about a bottle of bubbly and some chocolate body paint? And you never know, your lover might just fondue you till the sun comes up. (laughs) So this anniversary, send your special someone something from netflorist.ca.za. It's his largest same-day flower and gifting service. I think I need a waffle. Smooches. Harold. Yeah. Yeah. So... So I've got an old school friend of mine who is now definitely one of the senior guys in the ad industry in South Africa. But when we were just starting out, um, I used to meet with him to get ideas on marketing. And uh, in the early days, we had very little money to market. So we had to stand out. We decided the best yep. way to stand out would be humor. Um, very, very few brands choose humor. Most brands don't because it's risky and you get it wrong sometimes. So we've very often true. got it wrong. We've often got it. So most brands stay away from humor, but that allows those brands that go into that space to stand out. Obviously, the one we all know very well is Nando's and Chicken Licken do a good job. But but very few brands are funny. So we thought we should be funny to stand out because our budget was small. Mm -hmm. And so we came up with this kind of, we came up with this weird and crazy character that allowed us to say controversial things but it really wasn't us saying it. It was more this guy called Harold. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, he's he, he's lived the test of time. He's wow. been on radio now for a long time, and we have a lot of fun with him. And he's he's almost become a – he's our radio personality, I guess you could say. Absolutely. I was actually meaning to ask you about that 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 whole relationship hotline that he's got going on. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm still amazed by that. How, how, how What was the concept behind it when when you guys sort of initiated it? Right. So because we're a gifting business, the idea was that Harold would would give advice. He'd give mm-hmm. gifting advice because because actually gifting is not simple. Um, yep. You know, most people walk up and down shopping centers for hours. Very looking true. For gift. It's pretty uh-huh. tough to gift. So we thought uh-huh. we'd create this guy who would give advice and relationship yep. advice because gifting is often about relationships. But Very true. he's not really doing that. What he's really doing is he's entertaining. What what Harold primarily is. Mm-hmm. He's a radio entertainer. That's what uh, we. That's that's. You know, we tell you a little bit about our business, but what we hope you do when you hear a thirty-second ad is to have a chuckle or a laugh, yeah. and then, uh-huh. and then Harold's done his job, and we tell yep. you a little bit about about Valentine's Day or a birthday occasion, whatever. Absolutely. But really, Absolutely. his primary focus is to entertain. Wow. Okay. Jewish. Okay. Now I know. I reckon the rest <laughs> of South Africa knows going forward. No. And um, so, Ryan, then 2020 happened, you know, and a lot of companies sort of, you know, saw how hard it is to trade and everything else. So how did you guys manage to stay afloat and how did you guys still sort of stay, you know, relevant to to, to your consumers? Right. So, yeah, when hard lockdown came in April, uh, Mm -hmm. we couldn't sell almost everything that we normally sell because none of it was essential, flowers and hampers. So Absolutely. um, so what we did is we 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 looked at what we had and, mm-hmm. and we've got a warehouse and we've got delivery and we've got a system and yep. the one thing that was allowed at that time was groceries and fruit and veg groceries uh-huh. we we went to later but right at the beginning of april we started selling fruit and vegetables we created a wow. relationship with a wholesaling group and we were delivering mm-hmm. boxes of um assorted veg or fruit or combination Absolutely, and that's yeah. how we stayed afloat in April. We were, we were, 
yeah, our whole business changed to to food and veg, which was um, very crazy because that's not Absolutely. something we sell. But it allowed us to trade through April, and then in May, when mm -hmm. some of our services were allowed again, flowers started to become allowed again in May. Uh -huh. We were able to go back to some and then claw up as the restrictions lessened a little bit, and that's kind of how we got through the year. Wow, totally blown out of the water with that story too. So, what changes have you guys seen in the market thus far ever since the you know sort of 2020 happened? You know, what sort of changes have you? seen you know sort of popping up here and there so definitely look unfortunately we've we've seen an increase in sympathy as a category and that's obviously a terrible thing uh -huh. for the country it's you know the, the, there's no question the death rates are up absolutely uh, we provide a service in that regard but it's a very it's a strange thing for us because because we you know, know that space passed away. so uh -huh. it's, it's it's, it's not so, but in terms of behavioral change, that has changed. Get well um, has obviously changed because that's been quite relevant. And then, and then actually, one of the categories that has changed a bit is birthday because in previous years, if somebody had a birthday, they'd have a party, you'd go there mm -hmm. and you'd maybe take a gift. But now, yep. you're not necessarily going there. So then, no, you're not allowed to visit. Right. So, our service certainly in the hard lockdown phase became um, a bit more relevant for people who needed to. Wow. communicate a message but couldn't take it there personally so yeah so we, we've seen we've seen some changes and some shifts so was there more cli new client onboarding was there maybe you know people that weren't inclined to buying online did you now see an uptake of that sort of growing within the business itself yeah we we have seen a bit of up uptick in that regard there are people who didn't necessarily see e-commerce e as part of their daily world Absolutely. Um, they're now starting to do that. And and our existing customers, I think, started to see us as a service for other needs that maybe they wouldn't have had Very um, true. pre COVID. Pre COVID. Just the nature of e commerce and that we deliver. Um, it's not unique to us. Most e commerce businesses have seen um, a, a change in behavior. It's pretty wow. Cool. Okay. No, that's an awesome story. Hey. And all right, then, well, I'm just going to show you a little bit to a, a bit of a personal note, nothing too yep. serious. Um, no I just wanted to find out from your side that what are your favorite flowers? So actually, my favorite flowers are proteas, which is not Whoa. not that common. They're not, yeah. not that common to send as a gift, but I, Absolutely. I get those flowers. I find them just remarkable. And the fact that they grow in the wild is so cool. Like they're not in greenhouses, they're like, uh -huh. Like part of the Spain boss, boss environment in the Cape. Yep. They just got wild yep. and they, they magic. She was. That's wonderful. Wow. Okay. All right. So what's the most expensive flowers that you've ever bought? I don't remember the price, but on one of my wedding anniversaries, I bought 100 red roses. Wow. And that was, yeah, I'd never, I'd never delivered that. So, wow. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. I, don't, I don't remember the number, but it, it was, wasn't 100 rand. That's for sure. <laughs> I can only <laughs> imagine. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> GUS. Alrighty. So, um, in terms of well, let's say lockdown is done, everybody gets to travel. What's your favorite holiday destination? So my family and I are game reserve people. Wow. So that's definitely up there. Uh, we like um, we like quality time we spend together, and also being awesome. in nature is is lacquer. So we love that. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Alrighty. So another question then. What are you currently reading right now? Ooh. Um, so I'm reading a, I'm reading two books, a business and a mm -hmm. non-business book. The non-business book is called Where the Forest Meets the Stars, just a wow. random fiction book. Okay. And, um, and my non-fiction book I'm reading at mm -hmm. the moment is called Future Back Thinking. And okay. it's, it's, it's just a, a strategic book, you know, and I like to try and read one of each at the same, you know, wow. every night I kind of think what I feel like fiction, but a fantasy oh, yeah. world or kind of oh, hardcore, yeah. and then I have a go to. Yeah. I'll know to add that to my library now going yeah. forward. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been running an affiliate program with Offer Forge since 2005. How's that journey been for you guys? It's been good, actually. I mean, we are, yeah, we've been with Offer Forge for a long time. Um, it's, you know, we, we do have partners that we interact with directly 
uh-huh. like eBucks and Discovery Miles and those kind of guys. But yep. um, the affiliate world is it's just too it's too difficult for us to manage on our own to uh-huh. interact with affiliates on our own. Absolutely, Often it becomes a great um, kind of conduit for us to work with those affiliates that are out there. But we can do it in a centralized way. So, yeah, it's been great. We've been uh, happy uh, happy customers of Offer Forge for a long time now. Wow, that's wonderful news. That's great stuff. So another question, what makes your brand unique? That's a hard question. Look, I think I think in the e-commerce world, mm-hmm. uh, probably our uniqueness sits around this gifting aspect. I think in that space we we've got quite a we've got quite a strong positioning in the yep. gifting world uh-huh. um, in South Africa. Yep. So uh, I think we've been able to build top awareness top of mind awareness with uh, with customers out there that if you need to send flowers or a gift that we're an option you may not use us but we're an option uh-huh. and that, that that's good yep um, and then the actual brand persona is probably i mean the colloquial term is funny but this idea of irreverence that we don't take mm-hmm. ourselves too seriously and we you know we can be a bit funny and be entertaining and hopefully we we stand out a little bit in that regard i think that quirkiness works wonders and yeah. um well, in not so many words, uh, why should publishers join the, you know, the aff- affiliate program that Offerforge has that you guys are running in? Right. So, I, I actually think there's only one reason to to join any to to link with any merchant. Any merchant is if you're going to get a return, and the reason mm-hmm. why you'll get a return with us is our conversion rates are very good. So. Oh, yeah. And I don't know another e-commerce company in South Africa that has a higher conversion rate than us. And that helps yep. because it allows affiliates to spend some money to get people linking to our business with uh-huh. the confidence that they're going to actually convert that sale. So, I mean, Absolutely. you know, we deliver and we've got good quality and we've got trust and all of that. But actually, I don't think an affiliate cares about that. What they care is we're going to invest in your brand. We need to know when uh-huh. you send clients that they're yep. going to buy. They don't uh-huh. buy them with money, so they'll Absolutely. buy with us. No, well, thank you so much for taking up the time to have this chit chat with us. Now it helps a lot that you know the publishers and everybody else would get to see you know the other side of Net Florist as opposed to just an e-commerce brand. So, which is pretty awesome. Thank you so much for having to sit down with us to get to discuss a little bit more about what Net Florist does. An absolute pleasure. Thanks for your time. Pleasure. Now, thank you so much. Have yourself a good yeah. one. Just for now. Bye. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. There's more videos that's going to come out and you'll always get updated. Awesome.